So hello everyone and welcome to the class. I welcome you all to RN and Onam series. And I am Onam and today we are going to do class six, chapter number one, sources of food. So you have already seen it in the video title that the chapter that we are going to do is the sources of food. So as usual, always you see in my video that we first understand the headings, okay? So we will also understand the source of food headings. Now, before that, I want to tell you all that please take one copy and pen make and make the notes of all the things that I'm going to write in the board. So that whenever you want the quick revision, you can do it with the help of the notes. Okay, so let us see it. So let us now move and start the chapter. So first we will understand the heading of the chapter sources of so that it can be easier for us to understand uh, all the things in the chapter. Okay. So first as you can see it is sources. So sources means origin. Sources means origin. It means where it comes from. Okay, and sources of food. Food, you know, what is it? Yeah, the things that we eat regularly. Clear? Yes, so sources means origin. Is that clear? So we are going to learn about the origin of food. It means where does it come from? Now in NCRT books, you can have different heading like food, where does it come from? Okay, but the content that you have to understand is the same in both the cases. Okay, this is the same chapter, but with just different names. Is that clear? Okay, so here we will learn about sources of food. So the first topic that we need to understand in this is why is food essential? So why is food essential it means we are going to learn the necessity of the food in this thing okay okay so we are going to learn why is food essential for us so before this i want to tell you that you all have three meals in a day you are having your breakfast then you are having your lunch then you are having your dinner and then with the, another day, you are having again breakfast, right? So this is your meal, right? You are taking day to day, right? This is your meal. Is that clear? Now, this meal that I am talking about, you take it regularly. So this is in the regular basis. Regular basis it is. Okay, so it is in the regular basis. Is that clear? Now, what happens when you miss your meal, when you miss any one of it, like suppose you miss to eat breakfast because you have been somewhere and you are having some more, or you miss lunch or you miss dinner, anything you miss, then what happens? Yeah, you feel exhausted, right? You feel tired and you don't want to do the work and continue work, whatever you are doing. So, it means that we are feeling exhausted when we don't eat food. Right, but why are we feeling uh, uh, exhausted? What is lacking in our body? So the thing that is lacking in our body is energy, and energy is a necessity of uh, of doing all the activities. So with this, you know that we need energy for our day to day lives. Right? Okay, we need. Star mark this point and write that energy and why do we feel exhausted. Now, okay, we need energy to do our day-to-day -day works. Now you must having you must be having a question that okay, where do we get this energy from? Okay, so this energy that we require we get from the food that we eat. Okay, so we need to eat food because in the absence of food, you are having lack of energy, right? You are in the absence of food, you are having the lack of energy. So it must be that you need uh, food to get energy. Is that clear? 
So food is a necessary part. With this, we understood this. Is that clear? Okay. Now, in this, if we will see, not for energy, but you have heard your mother saying that please eat this food or that food. It will help you in growth, right, in development. So, that is not your growth and development is not related to your energy, right? Because you need energy to do works, right? You don't need energy for growth, right? So, it means that our food items also decide our growth, right? Yes. So, the food is not having only one function. Food is having the multiple function, okay? So, we will look at them. So, the first function that the food is having of ours that we eat, I have tell you that food provides energy. Write this in your copy and as I am writing it, okay? Next, next thing that is there and uh, is that it provides material needed for growth right and reproduction so is this point clear Okay, I am speaking it. You can write if it is in the, uh, maybe it would be showing your opposite in the camera. So, what you can do, you can just, I am saying it and you can write it. Okay, so the first point is that food provides us energy. The second point is that it provides material needed for growth and reproduction. Okay, next thing. It provides material needed for repair of damaged cells damaged cells and to replace the dead cells. Write it as I am saying. Okay. So the third point is that it provides material needed for repair of damaged cells and to replace the dead cells. Now the last four things that we are going to talk about is about our health. Okay. It keeps us healthy and enable us to fight against infections, infections and diseases. So, is this clear to you all? So, the last fourth point is that it keeps us healthy and enable us to fight against infections and diseases. Okay? So, we have seen the four points of the answer as the answer why is food essential? Is that clear? So, now we are going to see how living things get food. So, we are having this taste. No, now we are going to know how living things get food. How living things get food, okay? So, now in this we have to understand the two main terms and that are so we can divide all the living beings, all the 
living being on the earth is divided into two parts. First one is the autotrophs. Second one is the heterotrophs. Is that clear? So now we will understand one by one. Okay. So autotrophs are the kinds of animals that make their own food. Okay. They are make their own food. Like for example, we can take the example of green plants okay okay so green plants so autotrophs are the kind of organisms that make their own food heterotrophs are the kind of uh, organisms that feed on food made by autotrophs Okay, for example, we can take human. Okay, so these are the uh, two examples that we have taken and we have now understood autotrophs and heterotrophs. So autotrophs are the organisms that make their own food. It means they synthesize their own food by themselves. And heterotrophs are the animals that feed on the food made by the autotrophs. Is that clear? Now, in autotrophs, in autotrophic type of organism, only the green plants are the kind of organism they are autotrophs. Okay, other all organisms on the earth are heterotrophs. Okay, so only green plants are autotrophs, and other all organisms are heterotrophs. So green plants must be having some speciality, right? To do it, they must be having some speciality. So we are going to learn about that. So I hope that you are noting down on in your copy and pen as I am telling it. Okay. So now let us move to autotrophs understanding. Okay. In which we are having green plants. Now green plants have a process to synthesize their own food and that process is known as photosynthesis. So green plants use the process known as photosynthesis to synthesize their own food. Is that clear? Okay, so this is clear. So let us know the definition of the photosynthesis. So here from here I'm writing. The process by which plants make use of water and carbon dioxide in the presence of Chlorophyll and sunlight to make their food to make their food is called photosynthesis. So, is that clear? Okay. So, this is the definition of the photosynthesis that the process by which plants make use of water and carbon dioxide in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight to make their food is known as photosynthesis. So, to learn it for your exam purpose, okay, what you can do, you can make one short equation and you can learn it. Okay. So, what you can just Understand that you can write over here water 
प्लस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सनलाइट क्लोरोफिल टू मैन्युफैक्चर देयर गुड इज दैट क्लियर ओके सो दिस इज द थिंग दैट वी हैव दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ ट्रिक फॉर योर एग्जाम पर्पस व्हिच यू Used to learn this whole definition. Just have confided into this small portion. Is that clear? Okay. So we know now about this also. Autotrophs and heterotrophs. Now we are going to learn. Now we are going to learn about nutrition and nutrients. is that clear so we are going to learn about nutrition and nutrients these sound similar when you are going to pronounce it right the pronunciation is the same right so now we are going to learn the difference between nutrition and nutrients okay so nutrition and what is nutrition So nutrition is process of taking food and using it for growth development. Health, etc., is known as nutrition. So, is this thing clear over here? So, the definition of nutrition is that the process of taking food and using it for growth, development, health, etc. is known as nutrition okay now over here we are going to see the definition of nutrients so nutrients are the chemical substances chemical substances present in the food is known as nutrients so is this thing clear so the difference between them is that the food is taken in nutrition and it is used for development health etc now in this they are the chemical substances present inside the food okay so they are called as nutrients now we are going to see about and learn about ingredients if you are not able to see the board clearly what you can do if the writing is in opposite or it is laterally inverted what you can do is that when i am speaking while writing you can write that in your copy while i am speaking okay or you can what you can do you can make your uh, speed of the video slow so that you can write it easily okay ingredients now ingredients are the raw materials used to make food okay so these are the things these are the three terms that we learned in this so what we learned in uh, in how living things get food is we learned autotrophs heterotrophs photosynthesis nutrition nutrients and ingredients so these five terms are very important and you can get these questions in your exam okay so focus on these and try to learn all these okay So let us move. 
to the next fact now we are going to first see uh, take a short peek in the diversity of food items eaten in india of different parts okay so now it's uh, you have must have you have must observe that the favorite food that you have is different from the favorite food that your friend have like for example i uh, i like the sabzi of cauliflower well my friend like the sabzi of paneer so she is having the different choice i am having the different choice right so our food choices are varied from each other now same happens for in india also like this is the uh, rough map that i can make of india so i really don't know how to make the map of india so this is the rough map please bear with me okay so this is the rough map of india okay so let me extend it a little bit not too much and let me do it something like this so now this seems a little bit like india okay now as you will see like in coastal areas like in these areas what you can see the coastal areas now these coastal areas have abundance of fish so fish are there mean meat fish and rice of course they have mean meat now in the north india we will mostly see the products made up of meat in south india we will have mostly made up products of what uh, rice like idli dosa all these are made up of the all these are rice made ingredients is that clear so this thing is clear to all of you okay so this is a small peek just to the diversity so that you can understand that there is a lot of difference in the food choices of many people the state wise country wise regional wise even local people have different choices for themselves okay okay so we will move now to the next part which is the sources of food our main topic is now has been derived so you have to be very careful while understanding this part okay so this part uh, let us understand now with sources of food what hits in your mind it so says in that we are having how many sources in the world of food right so we are having two sources one as a plant source and one as the animal as a food of source right these two we have to understand in sources of food that how plants give us the food and how animals give us the food what are the food that plants give us and what are the food that animal give us okay so first we are going to learn about plants as a source of food plants as a source of food so we are going to learn a plant okay now the green plants which do photosynthesis and provides food are known as producers why because they are producing the food okay and we organisms whatever uh, animals including humans including humans we are consumers is that clear so green plants are producers and animal including humans are consumers so i think that this thing all of you it is clear okay this thing is clear okay now we have different things in our meal right we eat cereals like rice wheat maize wheat pulses wheat seeds and all those things we eat so we basically eat plant products okay so plant products plant products they can be classified into cereals okay pulses 
pulses, vegetables, fruits, oil, spices. Right, we are having a spices and what we are having tea and coffee. So you all obtain this, right? And these all are plant products. Now, for cereals, you can take examples of like wheat, rice, right? They are the cereals. For pulses, you can say moon dal. And you can take the sprouts also. Sprouts are the special kind of pulses because they are in the germinating process when we are eating them. Then we are having chana, right? So pulses also come in. Vegetables. In vegetables, we eat different things, right? Like uh, we are having the brain gel, potato, onion, right? So we are having those things on vegetables. In fruits, we are having two categories. One as normal or juicy part that we are eating. So one we are consuming is the fruit, right? And one is the dry fruit. Dry fruit. And one is the as usual fruit. Okay. So now dry fruits are actually the seeds. Dry fruits are actually the seeds. Is that clear? So dry fruits, example, cashew nuts, raisins, right? So this is also complete. Oil. Oil we get from sunflower, right? We get, get from sunflowers or we get from mustard, soya bean oil, right? We have heard all that. So oil, oil we also get and we use it in our food items. The spices like uh, elaichi, dalchini, long, all these haldi, coriander, yes, we use karte to make our food spicy, spicy, tasty and have a good smell. So this is also complete. Tea and coffee has a special kind of thing called caffeine. So they have a special kind of thing known as caffeine. Okay. So is this clear? And we consume it. Now remember that tea and coffee are the things that we if that we if get addicted to it, then we, it might affect our health, right? So, we have to be taking it in an amount that is sustainable for our body. Okay? So, this is clear. Okay. So, this is clear. Now, now we are going to learn about edible parts of the plant. Edible parts of the plant. So, should we start learning? So, the parts of the plant that we eat. So, parts. We eat. What are they? So, they are various. Okay. So, the first part that we consume are the roots. Stems. Fruits. Then what we consume, we consume flour and we finally consume leaves, right? And we also consume one more thing that are the seeds. So these are the parts of the plant that we consume, okay? Now, roots for example, what you can take is the root you can take carrot and radish the, the easiest example that you can get is the carrot and radish for stems you can get potato and onion now for fruits right plant fruits what you can get you can get as a chili tomato flour now, flower, you consume the flower like cauliflower. Cauliflower and you consume the flower known as broccoli. Leaves, you consume leaves like cabbage. Lettuce, right? For seeds, what do you consume? And for seeds, 
you consume like raisins, almonds, right? So these are the uh, things that we consume different parts of the plant. Now, remember that not all plants we can get all these, right? Like for example, if you say tulsi plant, okay? Tulsi cannot eat tulsi roots. We cannot eat tulsi stems. We cannot eat fruit. We cannot eat flower. We cannot eat seeds. We can eat only leaves. So for a specific plant, there are some specific parts of a plant that is edible. Is that clear? Now there are some plants which are having more than one edible plants. And the most and uh, the most beautiful example for this is the banana. Because banana almost all things are consumable. We can consume the roots. There are very dishes uh, made from the roots of the banana plant in the South India. Okay. And the stems. Yes. There are dishes made up of stems in South India too. Then we are having the fruit, flower, leaves, seeds. All these of banana plants are used to make different kind of dishes in South India. Okay. Now... Now we'll move as animal part, right? So animal as producer. So the things that animals give is the is divided into three parts. What are they meat? It is in four parts, sorry. Meat, egg, milk, and milk products. Milk and milk products. Then we are having honey, right? So we consume all these animal products, isn't it? We eat meat as a source, right? Meat as a source, egg as a source, right? So we are, all have this for the energy. So these are the things that we get from different animals. Like meat, we can get of goat, fish, and chicken. So we can get of chicken. Eggs, as you know, they are the chicken eggs, right? Chicken eggs, hen eggs, whatever you want to say, you consume it from the hen. Now milk you get from cow, goat, right? And milk products like curd, paneer. So you all get it from honey. Where do you get honey from? Is the honeybee. Now for honeybee, we do a special kind of culture called the apiculture. Now in this kind of culture, what we do in this kind of culture that we rear bees. What we do, we rear bees. Yes, we rear bees to get honey from them. Okay, so this is known as apiculture. So animal part has also been completed So today we are having now the last part, last part of our chapter that is our food habit. After this, our chapter will be finished. So this is the last part of our chapter. So it will complete karne ke baad, we will end our video. Okay. So let us see. Now you all have different kinds of food and food meals. Food timings are different times. Like I already gave you example, you eat breakfast. Then you're having your lunch, then you're having your dinner, and then again you are having your breakfast. So this is your meal that you consume. Is there and you consume it at different times. Now different people have different food choices and they eat at different times, right? They have different food habits, they eat a variety of different foods at different times, right? Now, we are going to see the food habits in animals. So, animals are divided on the basis of their food into three major parts. Now, two minor parts are also there. I will tell you about them later. So, first we will know about these. Okay? Herbivorous. Then we are having the Carnivorous. Then we are having omnivorous. And two which are the least are the scavengers 
and our decomposers. So these are the minor parts. So we will complete this. Okay. So first we'll know about herbivores. Now herb, as you know, with this herb means herb. grass and borers. Borus is what we call as eater. Okay. Carnivorous. Carnies means meat and borus is again eater. Omni means all. And borus means eater. Okay. So these are all we have. From the names you can get now that herbivores are the kind of animals, right, which consume green plants as their name, as their food. They consume green plants as their food. Now, carnivores are the kind of animals that consume meat as their food, and omnivores are the kind of animals which are like the mix of uh, uh, herbivores as well as carnivores. They eat both uh, they eat both plant products as well as meat products. Is that clear? For herbivores, there's a special animal, okay, which I want to tell you about. Which I want to tell you about are the cows and buffaloes or cows, cows and cows and buffaloes, cows and buffaloes. Okay, so now cows and buffaloes always have a fear that their predators will come and eat them. Okay, like lion eat the cows. So they are having a kind of fear in their body. So what they do, they just consume their food. They just swallow it. They just half chew it and swallow it in their stomach. Now the cow's stomach has four parts. Now one is one the special part. Now one is the special part in which they store their half chewed Food. Is that here? Mm -hmm. Now what mm -hmm. happens when they are in free and then when, and when they are having the free time, they just take it back to their mouth and they chew it again. Now the process, the process of re-chewing the food, the process of re-chewing the food is called cutting. Cutting. It is called as cutting, right? Okay. And the food that they are getting back, this food that they are getting back from their stomach to their mouth is known as cut. So, is this clear? Cut and cutting. Clear? These two terms are the short introduction. Now, when you go in grade 7, you'll get a brief, you'll get a brief uh, discussion, you'll get a brief knowledge uh, there. But this is just an introduction, how it happens. Okay? Let us move to the carnivores. We have completed only orders. We have completed. Let us take example of one one. So, how we go to the example? Yes, dear. Right, one example will take. Now, carnivorous, lion, omnivorous, humans. Now, in humans, there are two kinds of people, vegetarians and non-vegetarians. Now, the humans, due to some religious changes, so due to some religious changes, what they do that they eat only plant products. So, they are called the vegetarians and some eat both. They are called the non-vegetarians. Okay. Okay. So is this clear to you all? Now let us know the last two parts of the decomposers and scavengers. So what are the decomposers? First let us know about scavengers. Scavengers feed on dead 
and dead body of animals. Is that clear? So they feed on dead body of animals. Is that clear to you all? Feed on dead body of animals and decomposers feed on dead and decaying. Dead and decaying body of uh, uh, matter. Okay. Is that clear? This example we can take as vulture. And this example we can take as fungi. Okay. It means scavengers are the kind of animals which feed on dead and dead body of the animals okay and these feed on dead and decaying matter like vulture and one fact about them is that they are also called they are also called as the nature's nature's cleaners is that clear they are also known as nature's cleaners why because if they would not be there, then there would be a mound of dead animal and plants, right? So, these are the nature's cleaners. These are the nature's cleaners. They are called as the nature's cleaners. So, is that clear? This fact we all know. Now, now I am having a homework for you. I am having one homework for you. Now, the homework is that you will go to Google and search that what makes us cry when we cut onions. Yes, a very important question. So, you will go and search either in YouTube you can search or you can search it in Google. Yes. So, this is the homework question and I want this answer in the comment and those who will answer in the next class 6 video, I will of course tell their names. Their names will be recalled in the next video. Is that clear? So, post your answer in the comment after getting a search on it. Okay. And with this, we have completed our chapter. As you know, now if you understand, if you have understood anything, please hit the like button, okay? And you will share it with your friends so that your friends can also gain knowledge. And please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, okay? And this was our first science session of class six. So always don't forget to tell me in the comment along with the homework answer. How did you like it? Did you? Feel good with this video or not so that I can get encouraged and make more videos such like this for you. So for now, I am wishing and I am hoping that you will be good and fine. Bye-bye.